Perhaps we should start with self-introduction. Within the movies that you have seen, I created uh, the one, the last piece, A Letter to the Future. My name is Tange. And then outside also of this um, hall, you had a television, you probably noticed a television. It is called um, the lie or de the deception detecting function TV, um, truth number one. I created that as well. And I also would like to present uh, my colleagues. I am a member of Nodin. My name is Kosai Sekine. I created the documentary film about Chernobyl that you just saw earlier. Nice to meet you. I'm also from Nadin. My name is Tani. I created the very first piece that you have seen before the dance performance. It was called Here and There. I am also a member of Nadin. Oops. Excuse me. Well, um, well, what was I saying? Well, I created the piece where people in Tokyo were walking around with gas masks. It was entitled Blind. I created that piece. <sighs> Greetings. My name is Gren Kazuma. I'm a dancer. I usually work in Berlin, Germany, but sometimes I come to Tokyo for performances. I had a dance where I imitated a scientist or a, uh, Prime Minister Abe. I was wearing gas mask. I was half naked in dancing. Um, I know that many people were late coming here, so unfortunately you were not able to see my dance performance in the beginning. But my uh, dance performance is called Body Portrait, and it, you can uh, research that and search that on the internet. So uh, if you've missed it, please watch it later. I'd like to briefly explain about our organization or, or group, Nodin. Well, Nodin was created at the end of 2012. We created, as we assembled um, different video artists. Let me explain our thinking behind Nodin. Well, science and arts. How should we understand science and arts? This is something that we have been searching for a very long time. Are we part and inside of the world, or are we outside? If we were to conti uh, disappear, will the world continue to exist, or will it, in a way, disappear? After the March 11th nuclear accident, what world means to me, to myself, well, has in a way changed, and it forced me to reconsider what world means. I think that it, um, applies to everyone here. When we created Naden, we had these kind of thoughts. But first of all, Naden is not a name of an organization. It is a gathering of hearts and minds who have the ambition to live differently from a, with a different perspective from what we had before. So changing the perspective is a key message here. Well, we have many different thoughts. There are hard things, soft things, warm things, cold things. Many different kind of thoughts come together. And what we wanted to do is to be diverse as possible in terms of the perspective of these different elements. 
In the second exhibition, we have uh, thought about, uh, we created this name, Nodin. Nodin is written like this and expressed like this. As I said before, it's a gathering of people who want to change our perspective. So change your perspective upside down, and you can see that Nodin looks like just one single line. And let us doubt this. Let us doubt our reality, or what we thought as a reality in which we were living. That's why we call ourselves Nodin. I also would like to show some pictures of the past exhibitions as we introduce ourselves. The accident, the nuclear accident has occurred, and what has happened to us when we thought about what has occurred to us with this nuclear accident? I wanted to fill these blanks. It's in Japanese. It says, why? Do we have to rely on nuclear power, nuclear power in red, in brackets? Why did we have to rely on economy, economy in brackets? Why did we have to rely on urban area or cities? Why did we have to rely on television? Why were we so gullible up until now? When we ask ourselves these questions, well, previously we were working in advertisement. And one reason, perhaps, and one answer to this question, perhaps, was ourselves. Because we were working in advertisement, and what we have been creating, and what we have been doing, perhaps, was one of the cause and factor why the society is like this today. That was a sense of fear that we felt when we tried to find the answer to these questions. Advertisement for nuclear power exists in Japan. A tremendous amount of budget is spent for nuclear power. In 2010, for instance, before the accident in Fukushima, the TEPCO's budget for advertisement was 26.9 billion yen. The Federation for the, the uh, Energy Electricity Companies Association spent 86.9 billion yen in advertisement costs. Between 1970 and 2011, 2.4 trillion yen of budget was spent in advertisement in this field. These ad budget did not come from the, their true profit of these companies, but rather they based their calculation under full cost principles, including the money that or the fees we paid as users for power generation and transmission to these power companies. So various new pro-nuclear power advertisements existed in Japan. And post-2011, we have experienced various things which made us realize that the economic growth was, in a way, a magical world, our slogan for Japan in its entirety. This magic word, economic growth, in a way, was deceiving us. And the other factor, the term bond, that's another slogan that existed. People, when you're weak, wanted to form bond, which is a good thing. It sounds good. But this means that you can use this for opposite direction. For example, the peace is a good example. You use peace, but the fact is that you go for war. You're stepping forward towards casting a war by using the term peace. So 
the term, the language has lots of way of being used. And another term is reputational damage. Again, as a slogan, as a catch copy, this is a brilliant term. I'm being very sarcastic, but it's a brilliant term that we can use. And this is our second poster, a second exhibition poster that we've created. When you take a close look at this poster, you see the map of Japan. This is our first poster we created for our first exhibition. So we looked like our nodding the term looks like a gas mask. So we have seven principles that we've created for ourselves. Number one, we should doubt the social structure that promotes nuclear power. Second, we should be doubtful about this latent force within the mass media towards certain directions. Number three, we should act as a human being living on Earth. Number four, don't be afraid to criticize. Be truthful to your soul. Number five, be free. Don't be invaded by anyone. You should try to reflect your strong intention onto your art piece. Number six, think about all the generations ahead of you with love. Number seven, this organization is not an organization. Everything is decided by individuals. Accountability resides on individuals. When we started out, not then. It took us a courage to create these seven principles ourselves. Making statement as a person living in the society took some courage. And these are the examples of the exhibitions that we hosted. This is the art piece made by copywriter. Mr. Namikawa created this art piece. Before talking about the future of nuclear power, why don't we clean up what we have first? Back then, we talked about what to do about nuclear power. That was the discussion. But he suggested, why don't we look back? Why don't we do something about what we have right now? Was his suggestion in his art piece. And this one? On the preg pregnant woman's belly, you see a message. This is the film that we've run, just like Mr. Tani's film that you saw. What if the nuclear power was inside Ginza that was created by computer graphics, well-made piece? And this is the TV that you see outside. This is the, the foolproof detection of the deceiving feature available on TVs. There are lots of discussion being held about what's the problem with the multinational companies. And maybe we just thought that maybe it's a lie, lots of lies coming out for TVs. So we made a mock-up. And the mock-up being founded by the future person. That's the scenario that we've created here. Uh, the art piece by street artists calling for anti-nuke activities. Lots of art piece made by artists. Let me talk about this. Mr. Sekine Kosai created this art piece called Anger Room. Why Japanese people don't get angry? That was a question made by him. We should create, uh, he created a room where you can measure the anger level of Japanese people. Once you step into the room, there is this uncomfortable sound coming into your headphone. And you can, that's how you can measure your anger level. And this is called anger room. But these days, there's demonstration. So nowadays, you know that Japanese people can be angry at certain things, right? Yes. I was kind of relieved to see the demonstration for the past year or so, Japanese citizens' awareness level has been changing. Around last year, I was created this anger room. And back then, just before that, in Paris, there was a protest against the same uh, sex marriage. And one million people got together. So 
One million people got together to go against the same-sex marriage. I agree with the same-sex marriage, but putting aside what that's good or bad, it's a demonstration about love. And one million people got together. And we, meanwhile, after the nuclear accident, it was something to do about lives. It's more about the future for us. But like the demonstration size is about 100,000 people. So that means the power of one-tenth against those uh, in Paris. So I just thought about why there's such gap. And when you look around in Japan, as tange -san talked about the bond, the term, the solidarity comes first. People pay too much attention that you don't really criticize about others. You don't take any actions because you pay so much attention to the soli uh, solidarity. That's maybe the ethnic side of us, the characteristic that we have. And I love Gandhi. He said that without anger, well, anger is part of the capability of human beings, he said. Being angry is part of your talent. So Japanese people have a very low capability, poor capability of being angry. And that was the hypothesis I made when I created this art piece. So this is like a black joke for you. Of course, there's no way you can measure the anger level. So against that backdrop, I created this art piece. So are you going to doubt this? Are you going to... How are you going to look at it? These are the questions I made when I created this art piece. Mr. Sakine created another art piece. It might be difficult for you to just by simply looking at the picture, but it's an overlap of pictures. And there is this angry face behind the regular normal face. So behind the scene, there is this hidden emotions. That's what the art piece is talking about. And this Kazuma-san said that I'm radiation, then you gave money to others, just like what he did. Um, and it reminded me of this art piece. Kakimoto-san made this drill. And this is the particle of the radiation coming out. And he just distributed the money, the bills. So all the bills are being hung from the ceiling. And this is another art piece, the drill that you saw. Drill. It's nothing to do about complication of scientific facts, but it's very simple. You don't even know the simple facts. That's the message behind this art piece. The artist living in US. It's go. Is this during development? This is the abandoned nuclear power plant, and then she had a very traditional Japanese club inside the nuclear reactor that's being ab abandoned and decommissioned. So there are a couple of slides showing her piece. Let me skip some slides. Again, this is my art piece that you can see outside. This is called conceptual capsule toy vending machine. You see lots of toys figures, but you can buy concepts out of capsule vending machines. What if we had that in Japan? It might be quite interesting. You can buy concepts out of this toy machine. On your right, you see Japanese Constitution Article 9 badge you can buy. And on your left, you see the fact that if you pay 200 yen, you get 200 yen back. But that 200 yen is wrapped in a paper, and on that paper, it talks about what this 200 yen mean for you. May this is the 200 yen given by the person who only have a savings of 300 yen, or this 200 yen could be having some dog feces. And so there are lots of messages inside that wrapped paper. So the message here is the value, even though the money monetary value is the same, that um, there could be different messages behind. In the middle, it's questioning about money. And this is about Silvio Gezel. Silvio Gezel was a philosopher. And he once said that money also should, should age, should become older or age. That's what, that was his thought. And what actually occurred was 
a small town called Burgle in Austria created a local currency at the time of the, uh, the Great Depression. This was the currency that was made at that time in Austria that every month, once a month, you would need to uh, place a stamp, additional stamp here, which means that the money loses its value little by little as time goes by, which forces people to spend money. And this served a purpose at the time of the Great Depression when people were not willing to spend money. This was the front side of that bill in Austria, which explains about the Great Depression and which also states that someone who works need to be paid in its counter value, in an equal value. Money should not be monopolized by a few. That's why the Ber Burgles um, labor certificate was created. Let us save the poor and give work and bread to the poor. That's what, what was created. It was a very interesting concept and a currency. So that's what's in the, included in one of the machines, uh, the vending machines. Now, uh, Mr. Homa uh, Mr. Homa created this book called Nuclear Power Advertisement. We exhibited that in one of our exhibitions as well. I would like to uh, skip over some pages, but we have been thinking about how the world is created. How is the world made? Made. That was a primordial question for us. As we connect with the society, we would like to think about the world. Don't we think that this world we live in is, in a way, incomplete? Not just this world, maybe just, maybe also ourselves. Maybe incomplete. Uh, we have a question to you. This is a magazine called Days. This is the July edition. And there is an article featured by, written by uh, Miss Oshidori Mako, talks about the uh, thyroid cancer in Fukushima. It's entitled Oshidori Mako interviews expert regarding excess occurrence of pediatric thyroid cancer in Fukushima. Very first time on the 17th of May, the Fukushima Medical Survey has admitted the uh, excess occurrence of thyroid cancer very, for the very first time. And this is a very shopping, shocking news. But uh, strangely, this was not much talked about by the media. This silence of the society was shocking to me. So I'd like to ask Ms. Oshidori Mako to come up on the stage. And very briefly, can you explain how you came about this article? My name is Oshidori. This was an uh, official and public survey undertaken by Fukushima Prefecture at the time of the March 11th accident. And they started the thyroid screening of children under the 18 years of old. And it started in 2012, and then it's still continuing now. And I have been re researching and um, reporting about this survey since then. And for the very first time this year, this May, the um, special subcommittee within this screening body, f for the first time, admitted in their report that there is an, uh, an excess occurrence of pediatric thyroid cancer. Already very early on, when there were dozens or hundreds of thyroid abnormalities, um, they used to come up with excuses saying that there was a screening effect because the machines detect minute um, abnormalities and because they haven't undertaken such screening previously, but they, for, for the first time they have started uh, screening, that's why they are detecting these. So this was excess 
diagnosis and screening effect. This has been their uh, um, continuous explanation so far, but for the very first time, they said otherwise. And I was very surprised as I re uh, was reporting. Screening effect is a very known fact in epidemiology. There are papers on it. The screening effect is usually about two folds only, but now we are talking about epidemics or breakout. And when you calculate, if you look at, at the time of 2010, the number of um, incident, uh, uh, well, the incidence of um, pediatric thyroid cancer in Fukushima was one in two children. Uh, sorry, uh, one in uh, 2.1. Now, if you look at now, it is 64-fold increase in the pediatric thyroid cancer now. So this is way beyond the screening effect. It w with over more than 100 children um, diagnosed with cancer, that would be beyond screening effect. Well, if I may explain the background, screening effect is an early detection because they undertake screening that was not previously undertaken. Excessive diagnosis is different thing. Excessive diagnosis is something that uh, a symptom that would be so minute that it would not have required any treatment, maybe a s small mar birthmark uh, could be diagnosed as something else. So that these two concepts are different. Excess diag so excessive diagnosis is not an early detection. Currently, experts in thyroid cancer are saying that people who were patients who were diagnosed with thyroid cancer are not excessively diagnosed because there is a risk of metastasis of the cancer to elsewhere, like lung cancer, etc. I have re um, undertaken the interview of these experts and written this um, article. Well, because I have been continuing this uh, study since 2010, and because the, pr the people who wrote this original report had insisted that there is no health effect whatsoever of Fukushima uh, nuclear power disasters, that, that's what they have been claiming up until now. But now, when the latest report that was issued in May, they said otherwise. And in a way, it required them to be quite brave. Well, it, it required them to be ready for the impact of what they had said. Yeah, because they are, they have changed their statement. Actually, many people have read this article. A lot of people, residents, citizens, uh, parliamentarians, are talking about this article. They bring this article to the municipalities, various municipalities, and oftentimes they say that, well, I already have this. I've already read this magazine. So I know that this is very well read, but somehow no one's talking about it. Very strange. which is, you're saying that it's visible but invisible? This crisis that is falling upon ourselves, in a way, are we getting used to it as human beings? Are we getting accustomed to it? Are we getting numb to this crisis? Kazuma-san, body doesn't lie is something that you just said earlier. Well, I thought that it's a very interesting statement. And you also said that science is a truth. You said that in a very cynical manner. That's how you started your dance performance earlier. Body doesn't lie. Well, could you just explain what you meant? Just like Mako-san said, government, science, they pretend as if nothing has happened. They could lie, but at the end of the day, your body will tell you the truth later on. So that's 
once the damage is there, the your body gets sick. Not the radiation, but something else. If you lie, you get tense in certain parts of your body. Your pulse gets faster. Somehow, somehow the reaction happens on your body. And I'm a dancer. So I get nervous sometimes. Well, my mental state sometimes shows up in my body while I'm dancing. Meaning my body cannot tell a lie. Well, sometimes I have lack of sleep and that might be shown in my dance. It could be not on stage, off stage, the same. As we live our lives, your action, your attitude, your mindset will be reflected on that. So, no lies. You try to be someone big. You pretend like you can do this. You try to lie to yourself, but still, you cannot lie. Your body cannot tell you a lie because the body remembers. And maybe you work too hard thinking you're okay, but you might get sick later on, and which happens a lot in Japan, I assume. So you cannot lie. Body cannot tell a lie. And in comparison to that, science is to give you proof. This and this, thus that. It's more of a pursuance of truth when it comes to science. So there are certain data available. And on the art, it's more of a questioning that data. Art keeps gi giving you the questions. Is it really how it's supposed to be? This is my view. Is this my own view? Is this my right way of expressing certain things? It's more of striking a balance between art and science. In case of Japan, between lines and harmony, my art piece, it's about the peace and harmony and the lie. Harmony and lies between the two is my art piece. When I live overseas, Japanese people, some people say Japanese people are not truthful. That's what some people say. I'm half Japanese myself. So I'm trying to be polite, not to make sure I don't upset anyone. So I try not to be too straight, too frank with some others. So I pay attention about other people's feelings. So some people tell me I'm not being honest. Is it really so, I thought. So the strongest thing is the truth. No matter what other people try to hide, or no matter how much you try to tell your uh, to, to lie, government tells you lie, you, the truth prevails. Truth will come out anyway, later on. So that's what I believe. That's artists, that's how artists or people in general live and believe in. And that's what I'd like to focus on in my art activities. So about thyroid cancer topic. So in our field, in our industry, Shodakun created the blind art piece. In our industry, from our perspective, right after the accident, he made an art piece criticizing about the nuclear power plant or nuclear power measures. And Chernobyl necklace was being expressed in his art piece back then. And at that time, when you look back, the feeling you had back then, and then it's been several years since then, and then the feeling you have right now, do you see a gap between the two? Mr. Shoda, what do you think? Not really, no, no change. But film-wise, scientific view, medical view, epidemiologic view, I can do some research, or how to be a thyroid cancer. 
we saw the evidence already in Chernobyl after four or five years after the accident. It's more about foreseeable future. And that last piece, the film I created, looking away from the reality means blind to the future. That's the message. This is the statement made by the um, president or prime minister in Germany. So trying to look away from the past, it's not really about Chernobyl. He was talking about Auschwitz back then. So if you look away from the past, nothing concrete will come out. So I just referred to his quotes. So foreseeable future, there's a reality. And if you look away from the reality, and it's quite simple to look away from the reality, but as soon as you do that, then that foreseeable future might be lost as well. And that view hasn't been changed. Fukushima, for kids, we already knew that there could be some damage on children or people in Fukushima based upon the past data. So science side, it can show the data. But my, what I can do is via the film, I can talk about the emotions of people. Maybe I can send out the message to people through the film so that I can talk to people's emotions. So as you look into the future, we know that the, what's happening right now means that um, there could be war in the future. So through the reality, you can foresee what's going to happen in the future. So the reality, without thinking about the reality and just live as is, it's simple. Well, for example, economic growth, that sounds great. Richness, it's about bond, it's very vague. You can make the reality very vague. You don't have to think about the reality. I think those slogans, the bond and all the terminology, the slogan can direct you to that direction. Forget about it. As if you're putting the lid on the reality. So it sounds great. So And what you're doing is to put closing the box uh, with the dirt inside. So regardless of the past, now you have to look into what's happening so that you can live for future especially after 311 the reality was these are the reality we didn't really want to see but we had to look at it as a filmmaker as i try to produce my art my attitude hasn't changed but the reason why i created that film was because i collaborate with volunteers i work with scientists and based upon the reality we have, there are certain foreseeable future, and that's how my film was being made. So as not in team members, we create our own art piece, and that's based upon the reality we see. Through the medium of film, we tried it, we wanted to try something. It could be about performance. This is about looking at the reality and trying to do something about it. If you can just speak a little bit slower because the translator is being involved. <laughs> well, as showed us, Mr. Shoda's film, I, when I saw his film, I, right after the accident, I saw your film and it made me cry. I had to replace my contact lenses because I cried so much out of your film. But when I saw the film right after the accident, I thought that was like the future telling. Profit, as if it's a profit, it scared me. I wanted to avoid that future. That's how I felt when I looked at your film. Back then, I was a comedian, I, I am a comedian. I started the interview. I didn't know what to do as a reporter back then. But what I knew for sure was that there's iodine problem and there's a thyroid cancer problem there and inspection screening is very important and that's what you have to do first. In the uh, the monthly s s screening in 2011 the only people who went there to report about that were comedians just us and that was what the film was about and at that time i felt so frustrated what about as to why the society is not moving 
But then people are active in different places in the society, and at that time, that made me feel that I need to do something that I can do. Uh, it, so watching the film made me re, re, uh, brought me back to that time. So I had a lot of thoughts coming up, and also I feel a lot of re re regrets and, and frustrations. In the 2011 uh, newspaper, an art newspaper article reported that there's an increase in the thyroid cancer, the thyroid abnormalities. And if you look back, well, well, to back to Chernobyl, well, it was invisible for 10 years. But even now, at this point, uh, it, there must be a lot of elements that are still hidden in Japan. And that is very fearful. The survey takes place once every two years, right? That's right. But two years ago, people who were detected with uh, as to um, have no problem are now diagnosed as uh, having a thyroid cancer. So what does two years mean? Period of two years. And now it's been four years since the 2011. And certain people, maybe human beings, are losing certain functions, the functions of remembering we are forgetting forgetting the senses forgetting how we used to feel at that time four years ago is forgetting forgetfulness a way of protecting ourselves because it's too the hard the reality is too hard maybe we have we better forget but perhaps there are something there is a major defect of forgetting something that we would like to remember we should remember and Shoda-san said, uh, k important keyword, reality. Kazuma uh, s said that body doesn't l lie. The senses, actual physical senses, that's what you mentioned. Well, science, if science is pursuing truth or fact, we artists, as expression, need to keep doubting, as Kazuma said. And also something else that an artist can do is to imagine, to utilize imagination, use the power of imagination to forecast the future, forecast the reality. And in that sense, Mr. Tani, you created this artwork about if the Fukushima Daiichi power plant existed in the middle of Tokyo. It's easy to say that, but if you were to really visually see it in front of your eyes and you created that such artwork that showed people how it would look like, that is the imagination here and there and beyond that. Well, I think you had a lot of thoughts that, go, that went into that artwork. Can you just explain about your artwork? Well, well, n now and then, I still feel the same. I feel anger. I feel anger in this co traditional style of the administration. And now, they are pro restarting nuclear power. So in that sense, I have still have the same anger. In a way, the situation is deteriorating. So in that sense, I still have the same feeling. When we created that, when I created that artwork, well, to create an artwork about something that is occurring in front of our eyes is very difficult because we have, we feel certain aversion. This Japan also applies, the magazine also applies, but the target of the accident, the observer, you, myself as an observer, there is a distance between these two. I'm aware of this distance. Whatever the accident or incident, the war in some other country, we see it on the television. So in a way, we are just an observer. We are just an observer, so we are, in a way, ignoring the facts. We are silent, but that's the most scary thing. To forget, uh, or rather, to try to forget is something that we should fear about. 
hearing about news on the radio or on a television, and it makes us feel shocked. But that already is the beginning of the function or f of forgetting. Now we have the distance between Tokyo and Fukushima, but the radiation that was emitted from Fukushima came to Tokyo, and there is internal radiation that we are exposed to from food and etc. that we know from the data. So this is not about Fukushima and Tokyo. That is not between here and there. We are victims as well. And what we have understood uh, because of March 11th is that people who were living very peacefully and without any concern, including myself, understood that the government who has been promoting nuclear power with, with, full, with risk, well, in a way, we understood that we are a part of the ones who have caused the issue because we have left the government um, unattended, letting them promote nuclear without taking any actions. If Fukushima power plant was in Tokyo, that's how I um, created this artwork. Well, Ishi Governor Ishihara once said long time ago that why don't we create a nuclear power in the Bay of Tokyo? Well, what will we? happened truly. Well, if you created a visual, it was truly um, something that uh, would, would cause strong rejection and feeling of rejection on people. So I think in a way I was successful in creating such feeling on, on the viewers. So if the power, nuclear power was closer to Tokyo, then it has the risk of losing the trust, the losing the economic basis of Tokyo. So that was risky. That's why they decided to put the nuclear power plant in Fukushima. But doesn't the same apply to people in Fukushima? And that's a, that's one cause of anger we feel as well. So in that sense, the issue of distance, distance um, um, in terms of temp temporally distance, the time versus the distance, ge geographical distance between oneself and the accident. We, that's an in interesting or important concept. Uh, Mr. Sekine, you went to Chernobyl. Did, did you have any special thoughts about distance when you went to Chernobyl? Well, distance. I wasn't really thinking so much about distance. I was thinking about time, rather. It's something that has op occurred more than two decades ago. And now we had forgotten about Chernobyl, and it, then Fukushima reminded us of Chernobyl. The re I went to Chernobyl in 2012, and at that time, already uh, people wanted to already forget, because it's painful to keep on reminding ourselves of the accident. So people started avoiding the subject, even in Fukushima. So that, in a, in a sense, for me, time was a more important f element. Well, it seems like the time is up. So we need to wrap up our discussion here. So for you, finally, what is art and science? Not just anyone. Kazuma, earlier you said that science is truth, art is doubting. That's what you said. Well, anyone else? Well, in this context, I think the answer is, seems obvious to me. Science. is transformation, natural science, and mathematical equations, data, something that is close to us. So in a way, science is transforming into something that we can perceive like data. Likewise, art has a function of transformation using imagination, we can transform certain, well, natural phenomena, for example, into memory. And in that sense, 
through art, through exp expression, I think there is a lot that we can do. Before people forget, I think we need to, someone has to do the work of um, keeping something into the memory. May I? In my case, sorry, I don't think science is a truth. Sorry, Kazuma. Well, he's being sarcastic. I know you're being sarcastic, but anyway. There's so many so-called scientists right after the accident talked about so many things. I got so angry, so I decided to study on my own. And science is so new. Science and art from that perspective, Leonardo da Vinci, the science and the art was so close by. And that's how the, um, the nature was uh, solved. And I'm a comedian, by the way. And I study at the medical and science uh, division of schools, and this is more about the fusion of the Eastern and Western medicine together. And Eastern medicine has a longer history compared to for, um, Western medicine, like if, uh, acupuncture and all these 4,000 years of medical history. It's not really a magic, but it's the experience that's being solved via science. For example, the acupuncture points is concentrated in the lymphatic area of the body. So art and science is very close by. So Eastern medicine is based upon the experience and art is using sixth sense, just like the forecast made by Mr. Shoda's film art. So it's about the creativity, it's about the imagination being used to solve the mystery of the reality. We don't know the complexity of the brain yet. So there are so many things that you cannot see. And you try to find the facts. And that's what we call an art. Thank you so much for wrapping up our discussion. Well, I don't believe science is all about truth, just to remind you. Science is all, I think, that's just too much. That's arrogance. And we only know tip of iceberg. And we pretend as if we know everything. And that's how we generated the power, nuclear power plant. And something that uncontrollable is being implemented. I think that's a pure arrogance. Just knowing tip of iceberg and doing everything, that's a fool. Well, in the past, engineers, again, the art and science was very close by. And now, I think there is a too much of a stronger division between the two these days. So we should go back to the roots, basics, like the dance roots go back to the shamanism or praying for the local gods through dance. So I think it's better to have a holistic view between the two, not separating the two, art and science, but rather we should criticize each other from each space, kind of pat shoulder of each other so that the fusion can happen between two discipline. I agree. Thank you. So shall we wrap up or shall we end here? Thank you very much. This is the end of the discussion.